Myself and the Ancient Craft team have recently returned from demonstrating Paleolithic crafts at the Creswell Crags Heritage Site on the Derbyshire Nottinghamshire border in the UK. We believe it's the first time that prehistoric skills have been demonstrated in these caves, known to have been used by both Neanderthals and early modern humans, in around 11,000 years. And we thought you might enjoy a quick glimpse of the weekend. So this is our home for the next two days. All locked up at the moment. But tomorrow morning, it's going to be very, very different. Oh, I think that looks perfectly cosy. Looking forward to this. And I'm not even going to have to go very fast to get nettles. There's some lovely ones very conveniently right next to the cave. Lovely view over the lake. Oh, let's just hope for nice weather. It's the morning of the first day of the Ice Age Living History at Creswell Crags and we are in the process of setting up. We've even got a fire. It's a very fake fire, of course. Conservation is an issue in these caves, but we like it. It's amused us. So we've made the floor nice and comfortable with all of our furs and we're just starting to set out all of our different craft projects. Wave, Emma. Wave. <laughs> We're not quite public ready yet, so there's still a few bits and pieces lying around that shouldn't be here. But what a place to do a workshop. Won't be long before we've got the public in and there'll be lots of things getting going. So I'm pretty much set up and ready for visitors now. And I'm just warming up the project I'm going to be doing today. I'm working with lime bast at the moment. And all I'm doing is I'm thigh rolling two strands. So I've got one strand coming out the top, one strand coming out the side, and we're looping this into a basket. And this is based on a Mesolithic find from Tiber and Vig. So a tiny bit later than the site here, but we know people are living here at the same time, and it's a technique that's almost certainly in use much earlier in the Paleolithic. What are you working on there, James? I'm working on a replica of the Lascar lamp that's got uh, a few similarities to the lamp from Grot de la Moth. You can see the ibex on the back. Oh, that's lovely. And this one's already got it. It's really interesting to think about all the things that would have been decorated in everyday life that just haven't survived to us. Yeah, and certainly for objects like this, they would have been used an awful lot. It's hard to decorate flint, but they're often decorated in places you're not going to see them. If the lamp's that way up, you're not going to see this underside. Of course. So it's interesting that people feel the need to decorate things that often wouldn't be seen at all. Whereas, it's, that, it's that urge to doodle, maybe. Almost definitely. A very modern human trait. Whereas you get some objects, like the end of the spear thrower from Mazda Zeal, uh, that would be very visible, very obvious. And some spear throwers are very, very plain in comparison. So was it certain groups that had an artistic flair? Or was it some kind of cultural push to either be very artistic or not? Looks like Em's working on something fiddly. What have we got on the go there? Is that a needle? It is. It's the beginning of a needle. So I have taken a piece of bone, a lovingly sawed with a handy flint blade. Um, this is not a saw, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> at the moment I'm using this piece in particular to... Um, scrape the edges away and form my needle. That's perfect, because they've got one on the exhibition here, haven't they, that I think is about... How old was that one? Quite an old one. I'll, I'll see if I can find a clip of that. But yes, we've got direct evidence of needles on this site, so that's a really nice thing to be working on. I think making the hold's going to take a little while, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I um, will hopefully not poke my fingers in the process. <laughs> well, we'll come back to that in a moment. We've had some more visitors come in. And here's the needle in the exhibition. Twelve thousand years old and still looks fit to sew things up with and here's some that we made earlier. Some of our visitors, particularly the younger ones, decided to dress up alongside us. Others just enjoyed watching the different crafts or asking about archaeology. James demonstrated fire making using iron pyrite and a flint flake. It's a little hard to see in this video but there are tiny little sparks landing on the tinder fungus, which could then be blown to life. Again, we've got to be very careful. As soon as we had a glowing ember, we had to put it out for conservation reasons. But you can see just how important being able to make fire would have been at the time.
there were lots of different things to see or crafts to have a little try at. Some of life you might have been like it. at the time that the gorge Eventually. here was occupied around 11,000 mm. years ago or so. Um, they would be modern humans, much like us. Um, they would probably look it. a little as as different other, to us, but not very much. Um, but would have been using many of these crafts, uh, including flint napping to make stone tools, I can uh, making cordage, working leather to make uh, soft clothes. Uh, or even stone carving, whether it be for an object or even on the walls themselves the to do artwork. This, uh, like this they won't crochet. let us do any it's extra artwork on, on top of uh, what's already even there, these but uh, are not. it certainly it's gives uh, an stage. idea Basically of what uh, life was like. It would have been a very different gorge and appearance, would have been far fewer star, trees, all the, materials uh, the lake would have been there, it would have just been a, a shallow a stream uh, that may have had some fish in it, but the rain deal but not living here permanently. We were living here permanently, we would simply have more archaeology and found lots more stone tools and waste essentially. Uh, for all of the cave art sites in France and Spain that have huge amounts of artwork, they were living in those areas an awful lot more, and just the intensity of the archaeology so reflects that. They could make all sorts of things. Uh, start of day two and it's raining, has happened sometime. On the plus side, my lime bast is staying just perfect for working out here in the damp. We've put some hides up on the modern framework of the cave as a bit of a windbreak to keep the rain out. I think we'll be quite cosy inside. It might only be a fake fire, but with the rain hissing down outside, it really does make it a bit friendlier in here. James is pounding a sinew here to release the fibres. What's it going to be when it's finished, James? Um, well, once I've uh, released this outer casing, you can see and I've got the core out, I can start to strip off the fibres and I'm going to start to twist them together to make a long cord um, that will be strong enough for a bowstring. That's a great idea. It does make the most fantastic cordage, doesn't it? Really, really yeah. smooth and, and supple. You can see the real sort of shiny, sinewy fibres just there. Lovely stuff. Very tough beforehand. There were demonstrations and flint napping held outside so that no flakes contaminated the archaeology and a jewellery making an activity which even our very smallest visitors could help us out with. I think we can do that. It's Yes, I think it looks great. Basket progress. Yeah, I think so. Do you reckon it's almost there? I think it probably is. We were just trying to work out whether it needs to be much bigger, but I think probably that's a good useful size for it to be. Whether yeah. it ends up with handles or not, I don't know, but I'm quite happy with that yeah. as progress. Yeah, it looks really good. Nice well, we're into the last few minutes and it looks like a Mammoth has stampeded through our craft supplies. There is so many bits and pieces lying around, but that just shows that we've had a really good time. And eventually it was time to say goodbye to Spot the Hyena, but we're very much hopeful that we'll be allowed back next year. A massive thanks to everyone who came along and all of the wonderful staff and volunteers at Creswell Crags.